Good morning, folks. We've got a number of weather and science news stories to hit today. You're watching small plasma filaments snapping around the limbs of the sun. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours in 193 angstroms of light. Dark coronal holes are plainly visible, and the central bright region is the sunspot group born 36 hours ago, but it is in decay and has yet to produce any significant X-ray solar flares. The solar wind at Earth is variable, but wholly within low intensity range here below 400 kilometers per second. The slight variability is what's keeping the KP index up off the floor, but we're all green. Those coronal holes are expected to have their solar wind impact consecutively over the next four days. Meanwhile, we're expecting seismic activity, and a few above average rumbles have started the trend back up in magnitude, including the six pointer off the coast there in the Caribbean. Adding to the seismic risk profile is the near four way alignment of Earth, Mercury, the Sun, and Jupiter. The Jupiter Solar Conjunction, also known as the heliocentric opposition of Earth and Jupiter, begins now. To cap off the holiday cold records in the USA, we report on a sad story made sadder by a legitimate attempt to blame global warming for the freeze. This was the scene in Lebanon where everyone had to take cover midday. Luckily, not nearly as bad as their one last month. There was a tornado that dropped in the Carolinas, damaging a few structures. The people of this Fijian town saw only a drizzle, but up the mountain it was a day of torrential rainfall leading to the flash flood. And the worst of it, the flooding in Iraq has turned deadly. This is more of that ongoing moisture belt break of 2018. The drought in Afghanistan is caused by all the water getting dumped over the Saudi, Kuwait, and Iraq regions, not getting up a super into the mountains serious at all. climate report hits the net. I'm taking the time machine back to 2017, where this is what the world got for the annual temperature data. Meanwhile, we all saw this when we pulled the relevant data from the back end. At very least, it shows the peak is past. How about we go to Africa? Two excellent papers are out on the seismic zones and events in Africa and the Mozambique Channel. One of them won't be published in print until January, but they are exploring the activity in the ancient weak zone there. And as I learn about this lithospherovolcanic nightmare, I cannot help but recall the magma chamber collapse a few weeks ago, which sent low frequency waves around the entire planet, which had to have been a major event underground, and that just to the north of those regions in question, the ground is literally tearing apart, the Suswa Rift, a surface realization of deep fissure production. We reiterate our concern over the deep beneath Africa. Lastly, folks, the seismic gap is an indication of likely future breakpoints in a fault zone. Bad news for those in Chile who have already seen numerous big ones since 2010, your seismic gap is not closed yet, meaning there must be more megathrusts coming in the years ahead. If you missed last night's finale of the Fact series, I highly recommend it. We have linked it for you below this video. And website members, you've got a new Deeper Look episode and yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.